Good afternoon. The focus of my interest in particular is actually slightly different. It's still around code of conduct and what's acceptable behaviors, but I'm very much interested in looking at it from the point of view of trades and specialist contractors and SMEs, um, including tradespeople who might be at the show today. And I'm particularly interested to see whether we, it is possible to create a common code of conduct uh, for this part of the market. And maybe, just maybe, we might beat the professions to it. <laughs> the work comes, uh, was born from this review, a report published in December 2016 um, called Each Home Counts. Very interesting review where uh, several government departments came together with industry to do a, a full review of the whole consumer protection um, and the standards and enforcement put around energy efficiency uh, and renewables installations. It was a sort of a post-mortem, post-green deal. And it was looking at what standards needed to change um, and what we needed to do to improve this market. And there were 27 recommendations that came out of this report. And one of them talked about the creation of a new quality mark, underpinned by a set of new technical standards, but also a code of conduct, and some other bits of the jigsaw that I want to explain to you uh, in a moment. And it fell to me, it was part of my role, to lead a work stream that looked to develop the code of conduct uh, for this new initiative. We looked at dozens and dozens of various codes of conduct. Um, there are many out there for trade associations, individual businesses, commercial schemes, you know, your findanyoldbuilder.com type schemes. Um, they all have what they call a code of conduct. And I guess a bit like Simon's experience looking at the professional codes, you know, there were some common themes running through some of them, but there are also a lot of gaps. And there were also, a lot of them were very, very vague. So we started work to see, is it possible to find a common benchmark, uh, some sort of consensus across a myriad of different trades and specialists about what good looks like? And what has come from this are three really important uh, pieces of work. The code of conduct, which I'll tell you about a bit more in a moment, but also a set of framework requirements for scheme providers, and also a customer charter, which explains to the customer, in some cases the consumer, what their rights and also their responsibilities are as well. Those three bits of the jigsaw have taken a long time to put together. The final piece, the framework requirements, are only just published uh, now, are in draft, and are being consulted on at the moment. But when read together and looked at in an entirety, they create quite a compelling structure which could underpin a very successful new quality mark in the industry. So back to the code in particular, it's structured at the moment in three parts. It says to the specialist SME, to the tradesperson, here are the requirements that we're looking for in terms of you and the law, how you comply with consumer protection law, data protection, environmental law, waste management, and really giving a lot of detail in all the areas of law that touch on our day-to-day -day, uh, work. There's another section which looks at you and your scheme provider, because in order to get this quality mark, you have to go through a vetting procedure, and you would have to belong through a scheme provider. You would, that would be your route through. Um, and so we're looking then at the business background checks that need to be done, the ongoing vetting and monitoring of those businesses, um, how they prove competence, and also how they do record keeping and provide um, feedback into the system. But then fundamentally, this third chunk, you and your customer, and what are the sorts of behaviors that we are looking for? Behaviors that would ensure compliance with a new set of technical standards looking at, in the case of energy efficiency uh, improvements, would look at new standards for a holistic approach to assessment and design of measures to improve the energy performance of homes. Also around installation, around handover and commissioning. 
It talks about what happens around contracts. Of course, that's covered in law as well. But good contracts, transparency, uh, customer service, complaints handling, dispute resolution, all of these areas, financial protection, lead generation. There's a load of areas and as types of behaviors that we've tried to um, address within this code. Will we get it right? It sort of depends. It depends on uh, if we get the balance right. But we're looking, we're hoping, if we can get the balance right, we would get the vast range and market of SMEs, individual tradespeople, and their individual industry groups and commercial schemes that get all of them to recognize this as a common code of conduct that they're prepared to live by. It depends if we get the balance right between both being meaningful in the level of consumer protection or, or consumer safeguarding it provides, but not ridiculously bureaucratic and costly to enforce. It depends if we get the balance right between making it you know, sufficiently detailed, not just sort of high level principles, but actually explaining in guidance what are the good behaviors we're looking for, the, the, the green, what I call the green flags and the red flags that indicate a good business. Sufficiently meaningful in detail, but not nanny state, which tells very good business people how to run their businesses. We don't want to do that. So this is the balance that we're trying to work through at the moment and get it right. But fundamentally, what matters most of all, it's not the words that we put in this. It's about what we do with it. And it's about how it becomes something that is a prize worth working towards. How is this code of conduct, how is the quality mark that goes with it that will be launched later this year, how is that communicated, how is that marketed, how is that made a prize worth fighting for? So at the moment, these three pieces of, uh, uh, three pieces of writing effectively, they're, they're just in draft form and we're looking to go out and consult on this soon. We've had confirmation now that the quality mark, uh, we have an interim board now to get that up and running. Um, it looks like it will be a merger between Trustmark, which was the government-backed quality scheme I used to chair, and also the MCS, the Micro Generation Certification Scheme, will come together. Two government-endorsed badges of quality merged together now to look at both energy efficiency improvements and um, renewables and also home improvements. And we have 1.7 million pounds as a grant from government now to get this up and running. So we're looking to set this up. And fundamentally, the prize, greater consumer confidence, greater public confidence, greater policy confidence, actually, greater trust in what the market can deliver. If we get it right, it unlocks funding from government. It unlocks, we know of billions of pounds of, from banks, that are looking to invest in major retrofit schemes in the UK market. Um, there's social housing funders and others looking to put their retrofit programs through this new quality mark scheme. If we get this right, it's a major market boost and fundamentally we hope better results uh, for the millions of homes that we need to improve. Thank you very much.